This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Father, tonight we thank you. We thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you, Father, for the gift of eternal life. We can never buy it. We can never deserve it. We can never merit it. We can never earn it. But, Father, you made it freely available to us at the expense of Christ Jesus. And, Father, we thank you. We celebrate the gift of salvation. Now we are saved, set apart for the good world. Father, we thank you. And Father, tonight, as we have seen from your world, that you have set us apart to join Jesus in the work he does. Lord, we pray tonight as we look into your world, that there will be clarity, there will be revelation, there will be illumination, there will be understanding. We shall see clearly the work Jesus does. We ask Holy Spirit tonight, that by the teaching of the world, let there be salvation, healing, deliverance, in the name of Jesus. Let there be miracles. Let the church of God be built up and let Jesus and Jesus alone be glorified. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' name we pray. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. Glory be to God. God bless you. You may have your seat. Hallelujah. Praise God. Once again, thank you for being part of tonight's uh, Bible study. Of course, you know last week we started this exciting uh, teaching series that is called God's Restoration Army. God's Restoration Army. That is the series and this is the part two, alright? And uh, before we go into that tonight, now I said this last week and I just want to reiterate that it is important for us to approach this teaching series with it's a very a proper mindset, all right? So our approach is very important. I want you to know, like Paul said to Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, 14 and 15, Paul writing from Macedonia, he told Timothy, Paul was planning uh, to join Timothy, but he said, if I'm delayed, I write to you, verse 15, that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and grand of the truth. It is important for all that when we gather together, when we come uh, to the service, to fellowship, to the house of God as it were, we need to know that we are coming to be trained in the truth. It is important. It is important that we begin to move away from the selfish mindset that every time we gather together, we come to the house of God, that we are coming to shop. Maybe I need healing, you need miracle, you need breakthrough, you need provision, you need deliverance, you need all that. Now, we need to begin to uh, gradually grow out of that. Now, because it is important for us to understand that we are not just called to feed on the blessings of God as it were, and grow fat on the blessings of God, there is also works for us, alright? So, we have come to the family of God, we now belong to the family of God, we are children of God, but there is a family business. Are you listening to me? So, as we come, we need to come with a mindset to be tutor, to be trained, to be equipped for the business. Are you paying attention? So, we need to begin to come to the house of God, to prepare with a prepared mind to be trained, to be trained. All right. Now look, look at Ephesians chapter four. This is important. I want you to see this teaching series as one of God's way of training you so that you can be very effective in doing the family business, God's own business. We read earlier that we are called to join Jesus in the work he does. We need to be well trained and equipped for the work. Ephesians chapter four, eleven to twelve, Holman Christian Standard Bible. 
He said that he, that is God himself, uh, Christ himself, gave some to the apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why? For the training of the saints. Can you see the word? The training of the saints in the work of ministry. So pay attention to this. Much more than anything, my work, my duty, my responsibility as a pastor. Now listen to me. It's not just to pray for you to be healed. Are you paying attention? It's not just to pray for you to uh, receive or get one miracle or the other is actually not to visit you at all but pay attention today more than anything uh, than anything else my responsibility as a pastor is to train you in the work of the ministry are you paying attention so that is a work that is an assignment that is a ministry that God has for each and every one of us and it is important that when we begin to come to the house of God, we come not just with a mind of, oh, I need this and I want God to do this in my life. We need to begin to know there is something bigger than that, bigger than your need. Are you paying attention? There is a work, there is an assignment, there is a ministry. And so you want to come to the house of God to be trained, to be equipped. And that is my primary responsibility as a pastor. Are you paying attention to what I'm talking about? Every other thing is second. Now, Passion Translation call it this, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12, he said their calling, that is the calling of pastors, apostles and the rest of them, is to nurture all and prepare all the holy believers to do their own works of ministry. Can you, do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, I'm trying to help you uh, uh, develop a right mindset because it is with this proper mindset, we'll be able to get the best out of this teaching series. Are you paying attention? All right. That the goal is for you to be nurtured, to be prepared, to be equipped because there is a work, there is a ministry for you. You are not just saved so that every day you come to the church, you enjoy healing and miracles and all that. No, it is much more than that. Are you paying attention? If that is all you think uh, being saved is all about, then you are selfish. You are self-centered. That is a family work. That is a family business. So we are called not just to enjoy or inherit the blessings of Christ, but there is also something called the ministry of Christ. That there are responsibilities. And I desire, strongly desire, that as the people of God, we begin to grow to, 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 to fulfill that responsibility. Is somebody with me tonight? And one of the ways that will be achieved is by proper teaching of the word of God. So you need to take seriously the time of teaching because God uses teaching, his word, to prepare and equip his people. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 17. If you read from verse 16, New Living Translation, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach, to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. He corrects us when we are wrong, teaches us to do what is right. Verse 17, God uses it. So God uses the teaching of his word to do what? To prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Can you see what I'm talking about? So you see, God's word, the teaching of God's word is not just so that you can and get some miracle. It's not just so that you can have your needs met. Are you paying attention? No, it is actually to prepare, to train you, to furnish you, to equip you to do a work that God has for you. Are you ready for that tonight? So that is the mindset with which I want you to approach this teaching series. Uh, so this is God's Restoration Army Part 2. And uh, if you uh, miss Part 1, I want to encourage you uh, to go back and listen to it again on YouTube. God's Restoration Army Part 1 because the Word of God, the teaching of the Word of God is preset upon preset, line upon line, a little here, a little there. So we build knowledge upon knowledge. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? So let me just quickly do a recap uh, before we move on uh, in this part two. So this is God's restoration I army mean, part two. Now in part one, uh, one of the basic foundational truths that will examine from God's word is that believers, all believers, all the children of God, all those who have truly believed, receive and confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, they are 
God's army of restoration. So each and every one of us who have truly experienced salvation, we are soldiers in God's entire army. Now, we are not going to be a soldier. We are already a soldier. So salvation is also your enlistment in the army of God. Now, that is important. Now, because that is the foundation of everything we're going to be talking about. So I need you to truly adjust your thinking, huh? to truly agree with the word of God, that you are one of God's soldiers. Are you paying attention? That is important. Very, very important. So you are a soldier. You are not going to be. You are already your salvation is your enlistment. So, now, now, believing and receiving and confessing Jesus as your Savior and also as your Lord implies that you uh, receive him as your commander. Are you listening to me? So when I say, I confess Jesus as my Savior and Lord. So what I'm saying is this, I receive Jesus as my Savior and I submit and surrender to him also as my commander. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because he has an army. So everyone that says Jesus is my Lord and Savior already has a place in the army of God. Is that taken? That is important. Now, join me as we turn to Second Timothy. So this is Bible study. We're going to do a lot of Bible reading study. So open your Bible, get out your writing material. Now, this is time to train you, to equip you, nurture you, and prepare you for the work of ministry. So Second Timothy chapter 2, I read 3 and 4, and I'm reading New King James. So Paul writing to Timothy. He said, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, pay attention to the adjective here. The word good, I told you last week, is kalos. Now, K-A-L-O-S. Now, so it is possible to be a soldier and not be a good soldier. Are, are you paying attention to what I'm talking about? The word kalos there, that Paul used to describe a uh, 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 soldier, it, it means competence. So you can be a soldier and you are not a competent soldier. The word Carlos means able. It means you are what you ought to be. You are efficient. You are faithfully discharging your duty. Are you going to tell you what I'm talking about? So you see, the goal is not just to know that you are a soldier, but for you to be equipped and trained to be a good soldier. That is the purpose of this teaching series. To help you, to equip you, prepare you, and nurture you to be a good soldier. Now look at verse 4 now. So Paul still writing, said, No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Last week I told you the word entangled here is the word, the Greek word, and pleco. And I told you it is from the word pleco, which means to weave together. Alright, so Paul is saying here, you can never be a good soldier, a sound soldier, competent soldier, a soldier who is as he ought to be, if you are entangled with the things of this world. And what he's talking about is that if you are caught up in the things of this world. Unfortunately, that is what has happened to many soldiers of Christ. Don't forget last week in 1 Samuel chapter 30, we look at the army of David. You remember that? 1 Samuel chapter 30, and we said the army of David is a type of the army of God. God's army of restoration. You remember first time we're going to read that shortly, but I want you to understand it. 600 soldiers of David, they receive a mandate to go after their enemy and recover all that the enemy has stolen from them. They go to the brook. Now, 200 could not go beyond the brook. Then 400 marched for war and they were the one that restored and recover all that the enemy has stolen from them. Now, the 600 men were all soldiers. Is that right? Come on, talk to me. Is that right? Okay, so which one is a good soldier? Is it the 200 that stay back or the 400 that march forward and actually fulfill the mandate? The answer is the 400 soldier that went beyond the brook to pursue the enemy, they are what? They are the good soldier. Isn't that correct? All right. So, but the others stay back. All right. And that is what is happening to many believers. All of us are soldiers of God, but the only one who are good soldiers are those ones who have not allowed the things of this world to trap them. 
Are you listening? Those who have not allowed their mind to be so engrossed and preoccupied with this world, and they wake up in the morning, they sleep, they walk, they live only for the things of this world. And you see, there are a lot of Christians like that, that all they are chasing after, it's like a rat chase, like a cat chase. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's just about gathering and acquiring and accumulating the things of this world. And once your mind is preoccupied, now passion to uh, 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 message Bible, look at the way he put it, Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 4, a soldier on duty, the message Bible, a soldier on duty doesn't get cut off. In making deals at the marketplace, he concentrates on carrying out orders. Alright? Now, so you see, it is so easy to get caught up in the things of this world. In your career, in your business, in your work, and whatever you do. And that is all you live for. Are you paying attention? And once you get caught up like that, though you are a soldier, you are not a good soldier. Because you will not be effective in carrying out God's order. You will miss opportunity that Christ will bring your way for you to fulfill your ministry. I'm praying that God will help us so that we begin to disentangle ourselves from the things of this world. Are you paying attention? So Paul is saying to all, it is impossible to be a good soldier if your mind, your heart is in the things of this world. Are you paying attention? If you are so absorbed in it, if, if you are so engrossed with it, if that is all that you live for, right? Now that is important, but I want to leave that there. I want us to uh, move forward to now. So God's restoration army part two. In this part two, pay close attention, we begin to look at the mission of the army of God. What is the work? What is it that God has called his army to do? Now, first time chapter 30, our test, our main test, can you turn there, New Kim James? Now, Bible study, you open your Bible, alright? Okay, first time chapter 30, this is the army of David. Now, I read it last week, it's our test, and I'm going to read it again. New Kim James, now it's Happen when David and his men came to Ziglag. You need to know what happened before that time. So David was in Ziglag, alright? Now Ziglag was uh, one of the uh, cities of the Philistines, okay? So there was a war between the Philistines and the nation of Israel. And of course, because David was now under King uh, uh, Achish of God, alright? Now he decided to join the Philistines, the enemy of God, to fight the nation of Israel. But you see, the, the other's leader, we call them the lords of the Philistine, we not allow David. So they told David, you go back, we don't have confidence in you. You may turn against us in the battlefield. And we don't wonder. So they sent David back to the place they gave him to stay. Now that was Ziglag. It took a three days journey. By the time he got there, something unfortunate had happened. The Amalekite had come, alright, and they invaded the city. They set it on fire and they took everyone there, the women, the children, they took them as captives. Pay attention. So David came on the tall day and everything was gone, alright? And so, of course, they wept, they cried, but David strengthened himself in the law. I wanted to quickly jump with me to verse 7. So in verse 7, so David said to uh, uh, Abahata, who was the priest there, and David said, I would like to speak with God. Uh, I would like to consult with God. So look at what happened. So uh, Abahata, the priest, which is, uh, who was Ahimelech's son, now David said to him, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abahata brought the ephod to David. Now pay attention to it now. So David inquired of the law, saying, shall I pursue this through? Shall I overtake them? That was just a question and God answer. God said to him pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fear recover her. That is what we call mandate. Pay attention to this. So David was just asking a question and God gave a mandate. This is a command now. Are you paying attention? So this is, is an heavenly command. This is an instruction from God. So pay attention uh, to this. So God gave him a mandate. Say, go after them and make sure you get everything back. And of course, verse 9, David went, he and the 600 men who were with him came to the brook Bizor. We had those stay who were left behind. 200 people are left behind. But David verse 10 pursued. He and 400 men for 200 stay behind. We were so weary that they could not cross the brook Bizor. Now, look up God's people and pay attention to this. Don't miss this. Now, I want you to let us 
pay attention to a sequence of things, all right, that led to them uh, uh, recovering everything. Don't forget in this part two, we want to look at the mission, all right? What is the assignment of the army of God? And we are using David's army as a, a, a type, all right, like a case study, all right, for us to actually understand uh, the, the, the mission of the army of Christ. Now, you read in First Chronicles 12, 22, the army of David was actually likened to the army of God. So, it is a type. I told you last week that David was a type of Christ Jesus. And we are a type of his army. Now, I want you to pay attention to this, alright? Now, so, David asked the Lord uh, when everything seemed to have been lost. And God gave a mandate, an official order, an authoritative command. I want you to pay close attention to this. So, David did not just go out and chase after the enemy. He received what we call a mandate from God. Are you paying attention? So the instruction to recover her came from where? From heaven, from God. Is that taking? Now that's the first thing I wanted to know so that it is God. God is the one who gave that command, that mandate. So to restore the is from God. It is the heart's desire of God. Are you paying attention? But number two, I want you to pay attention to this, that this mandate was not given to the 600 men individually. Are you paying attention? It was given to who? David alone. Perhaps privately. So David alone received the mandate, but 600 men, they took that mandate to be personal. Are you paying attention? Now, we are going somewhere. We are using David to understand the David and his army to understand the army of God. Are you paying attention? And we need to understand how things work. So, God gave the mandate. It was in the mind of God for David and his people to recover everything that they have lost. It came from God. Are you paying attention? The mandate was given to David who was the commander of the army. Now, when David conveyed it to them, they didn't tell David, well, I need to hear from God myself, all right? They didn't tell David, well, I have to spend some time in prayer. I want to be sure that this mandate is from God. No, they just accepted it. Pay attention. That is important to take note. They receive it. They, they hold it. Are you paying attention? So, David's mandate became what? The mandate of the entire army. Is that taken? Now, pay attention to this number three now. Number one, God was the one who gave the, the, the mandate, the order, the instruction. All right. Number two, God gave it to David alone, but the rest of the people accepted it as their own mandate. All right. So no division. They had just only one mandate. Do, do you understand what I'm talking about? Number two, this mandate that David received, it now became for David a mission. Mandate is just a command and instruction. David had a choice. He could say, well, I'm not, I'm not going with that order. Are you paying attention? But the moment he said, let us go, that means the mandate now became what? A mission. It became a vision. It became a goal. It became a pursuit. In other words, it became an assignment for David. Do you understand? Now, we're, we're going somewhere. Now, but I want us to understand it before uh, we talk about the army of God. So, look at David. He got a mandate from God. The entire army, the entire soldiers, now took it as their personal mandate. The mandate that David received became for David a mission. No more sleeping, no more waiting. I've got a work to do. All right? The order had come from God and I'm running with that order. Are you paying attention? I'm pursuing because God has given me a mandate to pursue. So the mandate became for David his food. He became for David all that matters. Nothing else matters apart from the mandate that he has received. Is that taken? Now, look at the soldier as well. Now, the soldier also, that was what they did. All right? So when David said, we've got a new mission now. The mission is to go after the Amalekite and recover her because God of heaven had given us the command. God of heaven had given us the mandate. Do you know what? Everybody said, yes, that is now my own mission now. 
Do you understand what I'm talking about? So a man single, a mandate, a mission became the corporate vision, a mandate for everyone. Is that taken? So David's mandate became the mandate of his entire army. David's mission became what? The mission of his entire army. And 400 soldiers pursue that mission until they accomplish it and recover everything. Is that taken? Now, how does that apply to us today as the army of God? Let's look at that. This is where I'm coming to, all right? Now, pay close attention to this. I told you David was a type of Jesus for us in the Old Testament, all right? So, like David, I want us to know that Christ Jesus also has received a mandate from his father. Are you paying attention? Just like David, God also gave Jesus a mandate. What is that mandate? Look at First John chapter 4, verse 14. First John chapter 4. So, to be a good soldier, you need to understand the mission of Christ. You need to understand the mandate that the Father has given Christ Jesus because that is going to be your mission. Is that is are you are you paying attention? Okay, so let's let's jump into that. First John chapter 4, verse 14. So, what is Jesus' mandate? Easy English Bible. I love it in easy. Now, so John the beloved writing now, talking about Jesus' mandate, the command, uh, the order, the instruction that Jesus received from his father. He said, God the Father sent his son, that is Jesus, to come into the world. What for? God sent him to do what? To save the people of the world from their sin. We apostles have seen that it is true. And now we are telling people about it. So the mandate was what? To save the people from their sin. So Jesus came with what? A mandate from God his father. Just like the mandate given to David to recover her, Jesus also had received a mandate to do what? To save the world from their sin. I'd like to go further on that. Look at John 5, 36. Look at what Jesus himself said. Amplified classic edition. So this is Jesus' mandate. And just like the army of David, it must also become our mandate. Are you paying attention? All right. Now, John 5, 36, Amplified classic edition. Jesus speaking here. But I have as my witness something greater, weightier, higher, and better than that of John. You remember John uh, witnessed about Jesus? Behold the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world. Jesus says something is bigger than that. Something is better than that as a witness. What is that? He said, for the words that the Father has done what? Appointed me to accomplish and finish. The Father has mandated me to do a work. That work is the greatest witness that I have that I'm from the Father. Are you paying attention? So Jesus is here on a mandate from the Father. So if I'm going to be a good soldier in the army of Christ, I need to know his mandate because I have no other mandate apart from his mandate. Somebody listen to what I'm talking about. If I go after another mandate, then I am a disloyal uh, 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 soldier. Then I'm not a faithful soldier. Now that is important. So Jesus has one mandate from heaven. He has been appointed, mandated by his father. I love the way Jesus also put it in John chapter 6. Now let's go to the next chapter. At the same Amplified Classic Edition, John chapter 6 now. Look at 38 and 39. Jesus speaking, for I have come down from heaven, not to do my what, own will and purpose, but to do what, the will and the purpose of him who did what, who sent me. Now, pay attention, I just like David. So, David received a mandate from God, and David turned that mandate to what, to a mission. It became an assignment. It became his will. It became his purpose. Jesus is saying the same thing. The mandate the Father gave me is what? My will now. It's my purpose now. In fact, he said in John chapter 4, you remember when he was uh, uh, in conversation with a Samaritan woman and his disciples were sent to go and buy food. By the time they came back and he was no longer interested in the food. Look at what they said to him. John chapter 4, 31 to 34. This is important for us 
us to understand as soldiers of Christ. There is a mandate upon Christ from heaven. He came to carry out a mandate. He came for a mission. That must also become our mission. All right. Now look at Jesus' attitude towards his mission. In John 4, 31 to 34, in the meantime, his disciple heard him say, Rabbi, can you please eat? You send us to get food. You are hungry before you send that out. But Jesus said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Now, so he was hungry like a man. All right. He sent the disciples to get food. In the process, he entered into conversation with a Samaritan woman. The Samaritan woman went out to gather people to come and hear Jesus and Jesus would not eat anything and the disciples said you still have some time now use this as, a, as your lunch period now take a break eat but Jesus said no I am not doing that now verse 33 therefore his disciples said to him has anybody brought him anything to eat maybe we came too late but look at what Jesus said to them verse 34 Jesus said to them my food is to do what the will of him who sent me and to finish what it's work. In fact, easy Bible, look at the way easy Bible put it, the same John 4 34. Jesus said to them, My father has sent me. I love that. Now, I must do the things he wants me to do. Now, as a soldier of Christ, this is the mindset we must imbibe now. All right. Every day I wake up, I need to know I am on a mission. Are you paying attention? I'm not just going to get to work and get some salary to buy. No, no, no. I am what? On an heavenly mission. That is important. That is important. If we are not conscious of that, now the work the Father has sent to us will not become like a fool to us as it came to Jesus. So Jesus said, I must finish the work he has given me to do. That is my food. That is my food. So the man that Jesus received, he turned into ambition. It became a pursuit. It became a desire. It became an assignment. It became a real passion. All right. That he wouldn't even eat until the job is done. Until he has preached and he has won souls. But he has told someone about the gospel of the kingdom. Now, and don't forget David. When David received the mandate, when David turned the mandate to the mission, uh, to, to his personal mission, what happened to the entire army? They follow suit. Isn't that what we read? All right. Every one of them join in the mission. And listen to me, God's people. This is so important. We need to understand this. That you see, the mandate that Jesus has received and the mission that Jesus is pursuing, the work that Jesus said, the Father has given him to do, that is also what the Father has given to us. We must take ownership of it. All right? So we don't go to the Father and say, give me my own ministry. No, your ministry is the extension of Jesus' ministry. Somebody listen to what I'm talking about. The Father has no other mandate, other mission for anyone apart from the one that he has given Jesus. So you've got everything you do must line up with the ministry of Jesus. It must line up with the mission of Jesus. Are you paying attention? So if somebody says, oh, I've got a, a, a vision, or I've got a, a ministry from God, from heaven, God, and what that person is talking about, it has no, 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 no bearing. Bears no resemblance with that of Jesus, then we know that person has no heart from the Father. Are you paying attention? Now, because what he gave Jesus, that is what he has given to all his soldiers. What he gave David, that is what he gave to the entire army. So, what God gave Jesus, that is also what he has given to all believers in Christ Jesus. Now, you see, we need to be very careful. Because the devil will tell you, oh no, there are other things you could do. Are you going to tell you what I'm talking about? But you see, if it does not line up with Jesus' ministry, then you are not a good soldier. If what has taken up your mind, what has become like a food for you, what you are pursuing, it has nothing to do with Jesus' mission, with Jesus' ministry, then you have the cause. You are your own assignment. You are chasing your own dream. And that is what has happened to many believers. We, 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 we just came up with our own dream. We just came up with our own vision. We just came up with our own assignment. But there is only one assignment that God has. That assignment is for Jesus. And we are partners with him to carry it out. 
He doesn't give another one. He doesn't. It is just one. And every soldier in God's army must take ownership. You must know that what he said to him, that is what he said to you too. Now let's, let's go for that. This is important. We want to understand this Jesus' mission, this Jesus' mandate, this Jesus' assignment, because that is my own assignment now. Are you paying attention? Now quickly look at, look at scripture. Look at Luke chapter 9. But before we go into that, let's jump, let's jump into Luke chapter 4 first. Luke chapter 4. Now, you remember Jesus, uh, when he came to Nazareth, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. They gave him the book, and uh, of course, he opened the book, uh, written by prophet Isaiah. I love 18 and 19. Jesus opened the book, then he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He read that to them. Of course, you know, it's Isaiah 61, because he has anointed me. So Jesus, reading out his mission statement. Are you paying attention? I need to know that that is my own mission statement as well. Are you paying attention? The mission for the commander is the mission for the entire land. Somebody paying attention? What do you say if a commander say, yes, we have a mandate, we have a mission, we have an assignment, and then the rest of the soldier, they go on another assignment. What do you think happened to such an army? They fail. So, it must be one, it must be the same. Now, I, I wish I could say that in different languages. It is one and the same. So the mission of Jesus is the mission of every believer. The assignment of Jesus is the assignment of every believer. It must be the same. It must be the same. Alright? It is the devil that gives us something different. Because that is the way to get us entangled with something else. And then he knows we will not be effective as a soldier of Christ. So he said the spirit of the Lord. So when you read this, it is your own mission statement. That must become your mission statement. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor, spiritually poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set a liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Simply put, I am here to save the lost. That's what he said. Look at Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, 9 and 10. Luke 19, 9 and 10. Now Jesus, look at what he said to Zacchaeus. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this hour because also a son of Abraham, I love us there, for the son of man, Jesus has come to do all, to seek and to save that which was law. So can you see very clearly, I want us to see very clearly, in a plain language, Jesus' mission, Jesus' assignment, I have come to do all, to seek and to do all, to save that which was law. Look at the way his English Bible put it, make it very easy, very simple. Now Luke 19 verse 10, easy English. I, the son of man, Jesus speaking, came to look for people who are what? Far away from God. They are in danger and I have come to do what? To save them. I have come to do what? To save them. Luke 19 verse 9. Look at verse 9. Message Bible. Verse 9. Now look at it. He said, Jesus said to Zacchaeus, Today is salvation day in this world. Here is Zacchaeus, son of Abraham. For the son of man came to find and to do what? Restore the lost. Find and restore the law. So Jesus' mission is to seek, to find, to save, and to restore the law. If I'm a soldier in the army of God, what is my mission? To seek, to find, to save, and restore the lost. Any other thing is earthly. This is the only divine ministry from heaven. Do you understand? This is only divine mandate. This is the only thing the Father gives. All right? Now, I'm not saying you cannot have your personal dream and desire. Are you paying attention? But don't call it uh, something from God. No. This is the only thing that God gives. Amen. Every other thing is for you to survive on this app. Is somebody paying attention? But we are talking of a mandate from heaven now. We are talking of an assignment from God. Is somebody listening to me? We are talking about something that has to do with life, souls of men. We are talking of something that has eternal value. We are talking of something that lasts throughout eternity. It has to line up with Jesus' ministry. If it does not line up with Jesus' ministry, then I am lying. That is not from God. That's not from God. 
Now, that is important. That is why I took time to explain to you that David was the one that God spoke to. David was the one that got the mandate. And the entire army took it as their personal home. And that is how they were able to achieve it, to recover all that they are lost. And do you know why? The reason why we struggle with preaching the gospel is because we are chasing after some mission. We are chasing after some works and ministry and assignment that do not line up with that of Christ. Amen. So we are disloyal. We are unfaithful. And that is why we are considering this kind of teaching. We need to repent of that. We need to remodify, readjust what we call assignment, what we call mission, what we call vision, what we call ministry, and make sure it properly aligned with that of Jesus. Is somebody paying attention? That is important. Look at Jesus here in, in, in Luke chapter 9. I love to read verse 56. Let me jump to verse 56. Luke chapter 9, Amplified Classic Edition. You remember the story? Uh, they went to the uh, village of Samaria, a Samaritan, and uh, his disciple, they were rejected. They wouldn't allow them to come in. And they said, Jesus, let's call them fire, just like Elijah did in Second King chapter 1, 9, 16. But Jesus, in verse 55 and 56, but Jesus turned and rebuked them and severely censored them and said to them, you do not know of what sort of spirit you are. You are not like Elijah. You are better than Elijah. You a new creation in Christ. You've got a new heart. You've got the nature of God. You've got the life of God. Look at verse 56. Jesus sees every opportunity to plainly declare his mission statement so that we don't miss it at all. There's no second guessing. It is clearly written in the scripture. For the Son of Man did not come to do all to destroy men's life, but to do all to save them from the penalty of eternal death and the journey on to another place. So the Son of Man did not come to do all to destroy men's life, but to do all to save them. To save them. That is what I must be committed to if I'm a good soldier. That is what you must be committed to. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, the message Bible. We read the scripture while we are praying. Let's get back to it. Now, so the Bible says, no, we neither make nor save ourselves. Alright, God does both the making and saving. So, God save us. Now, why? He creates each, uh, each of us. So if you're a believer, you are created a new creation. The Bible said by Christ Jesus to do what? To join him. Do you have that in your Bible? To join him in what? In the work he does. Not to give me something different. Are you paying attention? So God did not save me. God did not call me to give me something different from Jesus. No. He called me to do what? To join Jesus in the work he does. Just like the army of David. They, David received the mandate to recover all. David set it as a mission, as a goal, as a pursuit. And the entire army did what? They joined David in carrying out the mandate. They joined David in pursuing and fulfilling the mission. What am I supposed to do as a soldier of so Christ? I need to join Jesus in doing what? In fulfilling the mission. Amen. To seek for the lost soul. To preach the gospel of the kingdom. To restore them. Bring them to God. That is my mission. That is my mission. I must be passionate. Like Jesus, it must become a food for me. Are you paying attention? It must become something I love to do. I am passionate to do above anything else. Above anything else. If there is anything that is more interesting to me, if there is anything that I am more passionate about, other than this, I am not a faithful soldier. I am not a good soldier. I am not what I ought to be. Carlos, alright? I am not what I ought to be. To be what you ought to be, you've got to be sold out onto Jesus' mission, Jesus' work, and work alone. If somebody sit there, he called us to do what? To join him. Join him in the work he does. In the work he does. Which was seeking for the lost soul. Finding the lost soul. Saving them. Restoring them. Preaching the gospel to them. That is our work. Now, every other thing we do, those charitable works we do, all right? Are you paying attention? Now, I, I, I need to be very, very clear with this. Every other work we do, it doesn't matter what we call it. If it is not winning souls, preaching the gospel, bringing those who are far away from God to him, are you paying attention? It has no eternal reward. It is considered hardly, hardly things. It is just one. 
And that is winning soul, preaching the gospel. And that is why the devil entrap us. The devil suggests so many other good works we can do. Is somebody paying attention? The devil suggests so many things we can do apart from lining up with Jesus' work, seeking the lost and doing that. Are you paying attention? I'm not saying those things are not good, but you see, it is misplacing our priority. Are you paying attention? Take for instance, a soldier that's on a specific mission. Alright? They're on a specific mission to carry out a specific order. And they got there, and there are other good things. And they got entangled. They got preoccupied with doing other good things. But the primary order, the primary mission that they were sent to, they left it undone. Are they going to be celebrated when they return? They did some good works in the place. But they did not carry out the mission, the specific mission they were given. God soldiers, we need to start adjusting our priority. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? That's the goal of this teaching series. We need to begin to adjust our priority. We need to understand that God is serious with the mandate. God is serious with the mission. There is nothing else that matters like that. Everything we do must line up with that. If it is not, then as far as God is concerned, it is a waste of time. It is a waste of time. Now, look, look at Jesus here in John 20, 21, as we get ready to round off. Now, John 20, 21, easy to read version. Now, Jesus speaking here. Then Jesus said again to his disciples after his resurrection, he said, peace be with you. It was the Father who sent me. Can you see Jesus? He said, this is an heavenly mandate. Now, every time he's standing on his father, now it is to let you know that is all that the father has for us. You don't come back tomorrow and say, the Father has given me something else to do. No. The Father, Jesus said, what I'm telling you is from the Father. And the Father is not double-tongued. Are you paying attention? He has just only one mandate. He has just only one mission. It is to save the world. Are you listening to me? God wants all men to be saved. His only mission is salvation, his redemption. That is the will of the Father. That is the mandate that he has given Jesus. Are you paying attention? And Jesus, he said, look, the Father sent me and I'm doing something now. And I am now doing what? Sending you in what? In the same way. I am sending you to continue. Look, guys, I have shed my blood. Look, guys, I reconcile. I have paid for the sins of the old world. Now you go and tell the people this is the good news. Next week we begin to look at what do we say? Because many a time when we preach, we are not preaching good news at all. Are you listening to me? So from next week we begin to look at the good news. What is the gospel? What is the good news? Because that is how we carry out our mission. Are you paying attention? But today, what I just want you to understand is that God has a singular mandate. God has a singular mission. God has a singular work for all of us. The same work that he gave to Jesus. Are you paying attention? It is my work. It is my mandate. Any other thing I give myself to, it is just me. It is not from the Father. Are you paying attention? It might be good for me to keep my body and soul together. Are you paying attention? But you are talking about what matters to the Father. It is just one, and it is what He gave Jesus to do. And I love Jesus. When He was here, He was He was He was just focused on that. That was all that He did. I wish that is also how we live our life. Just give ourselves to that. That is all that matters. When you get to heaven, that is the only basis you're going to be rewarded for. Nothing else matters. Every other thing ends with this world. Are you paying attention to what I'm talking about? The only thing that matters are the souls that you are able to preach and, and preach to and bring to Jesus. That is all that really matters. That's all that matter. So Jesus said, I am sending you in the same way. I am sending you with the same mandate. That's what he's talking about. I'm sending you on the same mission. I am sending you to do the same war. Not something different. Not something else. Mark 16, 15. Mark 16, 15. We read one more scripture and then we pray. Mark 16, 15. Look at what he said. Jesus said to them when he rose up, go everywhere. Let someone say everywhere. Everywhere. So it doesn't matter where you go, it is still one mission. All right? One assignment. Go everywhere in the world, tell the good news to what? To everyone. To everyone. So we have, it doesn't matter where I go, it is one mission, it is one mandate, it is one ministry, it is one assignment. It doesn't matter how many people I come in contact with, it is still the same mandate. Tell them the good news. Preach the good news to them. That is the work. 
As soldiers of Christ, we need to become singular minded. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? We need to, 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 to readjust our life, readjust our priority and make this a priority. Make this a priority. You are a soldier. You're a soldier of Christ in God's restoration army. Christ's mandate is your mandate. Christ's mission is your mission. I want you to rise to your feet. And next week we begin to look at how do we carry it out. We carry it out by preaching the gospel. We need to understand the gospel. So that you don't go out there and what you are preaching is not the gospel. There are a lot of people out there shouting and screaming. But what they are preaching is no good news at all. All right. So we need to understand. Jesus said, go everywhere and tell them the good news. The good news. So what is the good news? We find out next week. You don't want to miss that. Now I want you to know that if you are not actively and passionately engaged in the mission of Christ, you are not a loyal soldier. You are not a good soldier. You are not a faithful soldier. And do you know one thing about the devil? He does not mind me chasing after anything else. He does not mind me pursuing anything. He does not mind me giving my whole life, my energy, my time to anything else. As long as it is, as it is not Christ's vision. Are you listening to me? Because the devil knows that's all that matters. It doesn't matter anything else. He allows me to go after them and do them. The only thing he doesn't want me to make a priority is Jesus' mission, Jesus' vision to seek for the lost, to preach the gospel. Let's close with what Paul says here as we begin to pray. First Corinthians 9 16. Paul, one of the finest soldiers in God's army. Look at what he said. I pray that this also will be our own body. Paul said, 1 Corinthians 9, 16, For I preach the gospel. If I preach the gospel, Paul talking, next week we are going to see what is the gospel. What is the nature of the gospel? I have nothing to boast of. Paul is saying, I'm just carrying out the order. I'm just carrying out the mandate. I'm just carrying out the mission of Christ. For necessity is laid upon me. It is a mandate. Are you paying attention? Now, now you see, Preaching the gospel, it is not something that we do when it is convenient. That is why you are saved to join Jesus is in the good work, in, in the work he does. Paul is saying it is a mandate upon me. It is it is like a body. And look at what he said. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. What he's saying is that there is an agony. That's what that word woe means. In the original Greek, the Passion Translation put it better. He said, for you see, even though I proclaim the good news, I can't take the credit for my labor, for I am compelled to fulfill my duty by completing this war. It is time for us to begin to see it as our duty. David saw it as his duty to go after the Amalekites. The entire army of David saw it as their duty, responsibility. The same way we also must see it. It is our duty. It is our assignment. That is our vision. Don't waste time fasting and praying and asking God uh, for a vision for a ministry. Jesus' mission is your mission. Give yourself to preaching the gospel. And I love what Paul said, it will be agony to me if I did not constantly preach the gospel. Do you know what he said? It will be a pain in my heart. Paul is saying, I am, what else will I do? That's what he said. What else matters? What else? What else matter? If I don't do it, it is a pain in my heart. I'm just praying that the Lord will help us. That we will see what Paul saw. I just want you to ask the Lord, say, Lord, help me. Help me to see that your mission is my mission. Help me to see that your mandate is my mandate. Help me to see that that is all that the Father has come in to do. Help me like Paul to see it as a duty, as a necessity. Help me to see it as a mandate, as a matching order, as what I must do. Not when it is convenient. It is not a part-time work. Are you listening to me? It is not that God calls some people specially for it. No, all of us are to preach the gospel. Is somebody listening to me? My job is to equip and train you to do it. Just as I preach the gospel as well. It is not for pastors. It is for everyone. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now it is not, there was no selected soldiers in Ami Devi that carry out the order. Everyone carry out the order. The same way in the army of God, everyone preach the gospel. And you listen to me, everyone. Next week we are going to see it. everyone. It doesn't matter. You give, you whatever, you still preach the gospel. It is a duty for every one of us.
Father, I pray more than words I could say, more than words can communicate. I pray, oh God, that everyone under the sound of my voice will also have and the same burden, the same burden that Paul has, that Paul will say, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. Father, we pray, Lord, that we will see that this is our mandate. We will see clearly that this is why we are still alive. You want us to join Jesus in the work of saving the lost. Help us, Father, that we will be good soldiers. Lord, we will not be found wanting at our duty post. We will not be distracted with the things of this world. We will not chase after things that are no eternal value, but Lord, we will give ourselves to that which matter most, and that is winning souls for you. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory be Hope to you have God. Been challenged, ha encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703-5572 or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk Thanks for listening.